Hi, my name is Beth Griffin Russell, and I am the owner of Studio Sapan in Portland. I am a co-founder of Thai Herbal Topicals with two amazing Thai women, um, and I'm a Chinese herbalist. I've been in practice for 10 years, and I love external herbs. I have been mulling them over, using them, making my own stuff, and um, finally have landed in the lucky space to have the opportunity to create an herbal factory in Thailand that's basically building out a two-story clinic um, in Thailand to convert it into a GMP certified factory. So um, I have a family connection to Thailand. No, I'm not harshing Chinese herbs at all. I love Chinese herbs. Um, but I have also found that a lot of the Thai herbs, which are super, you know, rhizome heavy and come from the tropical environment of Thailand, um, there's a lot of aromatics that are just lovely, um, that are hard to find as pr predominant notes in Chinese herbalism. So um, I was really drawn to a lot of the kind of aesthetics of Thai herbal medicine. I am not a Thai herbalist, let me just say that. I am working with Thai herbalists. So using my knowledge as a Chinese herbalist, I can understand some of the interplay and some of the importance of keeping the formulations true to their original uh, theory. So I'm not trying to mix and match and say, oh, here's a Chinese herb that does this, here's a Thai herb that does that, let's put them together and see what happens. I'm following uh, the lead of a um, master's degree level Thai herbalist that I'm working with. Um, and I'm using my knowledge of the kind of the American consumer market, um, my clinical experience trialing these formulas and my understanding of basic pharmacology <laughs> uh, to um, help produce some really great formulas that can be available um, for customers in the US, which is really exciting. So um, the other thing that I really love about Thai herbal medicine that has a lot of parallels in Chinese medicine is that um, a lot of the herbs, um, topical formulas, which are used extensively at home throughout Thailand, like everyone has their favorite balm, or they might have like 10 different balms I use for really specific things. Like I might use this one when I have really bad sciatic pain. I might use this one when I have indigestion. Or I'll sniff this thing when I'm, you know, standing waiting for a bus on a polluted street corner. Um, there's all kinds of herbal medicine just woven into daily life, um, which is also really exciting uh, to see and experience in Thailand. Um, I want to bring some of that kind of um, consumer friendly, uh, experience that leads to a sense of healthcare autonomy that I think many of us as acupuncturists are really trying to help promote. We want people to know what type of topical to use in combination with making sure they remember to go get acupuncture, <laughs> to remember to do their, you know, exercises and all that. So I want to help uh, create external herbs that have these cues that they can automatically follow, um, whether it's based on the scent, whether, whether it's based on the color, um, or the way that it's combined with different therapies, like gua sha or the tiger bull compress, or an acupressure routine that you can provide. So um, the color coding system is really simple and super intuitive and something I think would really be lovely for Americans to adopt, which is if you have a hot, inflamed, painful place, uh, use something that is green to cool it down. If you have um, some kind of uh, abdomen focused or um, in Chinese medicine it would really be spleen, kind of condition involving the muscles, involving digestion, go for the yellow color. If you have uh, old, 
pain with arthritis, um, blood deficiency, uh, old scars or um, wounds that um, haven't healed that well or just chronic pain go for red to stimulate blood flow um, or to reach the blood level. Then if you have respiratory complaints, um, kind of allergies or lack of focus, use a white to stimulate your lungs and mind. So the green, yellow, red, and white is a really simple system that is used extensively throughout Thailand for classifying the types of medicine that people can use. And I'm sure it is more complicated than that, but it's meant to be super simple for somebody who can't read or just doesn't want to think about whatever they're, you know, purchasing. They don't want, care what the ingredients are, they just say, will this make my bug bite go away, you know, then use the green one because it's red bug bite, put the green thing on it. <laughs> so anyway, um, I have a really basic set of three oils right now that um, can be layered really nicely with other Chinese medicine topicals. Um, and that is part of the point of making an oil um, instead of a liniment or a balm. So this is right in the middle there. You can layer it with a balm, you can layer it with a uh, liniment, and, or you can also just use it on its own for massage and gua sha. Um, so the oils themselves are activating, balancing, and da -da -da, cold. So um, going through the three of them, briefly because their ingredients are as you know as you know as you look into any individual Chinese herb if you look into studies the vast majority of them have multiple interesting studies for internal and external usage and this is definitely true for the herbs involved in these so I'm just gonna kind of try to go through them quickly um, but the point of having them in this format is so you, you don't need to um, extract each little bit of information from each herb. It is about their synergy. So, uh, activating. Activating um, is the one that's more for arthritis, aches. Um, it's really anti-inflammatory. The main makeup is over 50% herbal infusion. The herbal infusion uh, has been done uh, after grinding the herbs into mortar, mortar and pestle by hand. Um, the infusion is in the menthol and alcohol, um, all, like all the different oils um, and alcohol base. So it's extracted through oil, through alcohol, and then also through water. You get everything in this, um, and it's sat for at least three months. So the really ex exciting, you know, kind of smelly ingredients are methyl salicylate, born borneol, camphor, menthol, and eucalyptus oil. Um, so it does have a little bit of that minty eucalyptus-y smell, but that's not predominant. It actually smells more herbal. Um, the five primary herbs in the herbal infusion are Thai ginger, um, which is uh, gingerber kasuminar. Um, it's a really famous one in Thailand. Often we'll just use a, a ply. Uh, this is Thai ginger is known as ply in Thai. Um, they'll just use ply oil for everything, basically. It's a bright, bright yellow oil. Um, it will often be combined with kaffir lime. Um, and it's used... Um, for every type of muscle aches and pains. So um, it's used as one of the main ingredients in the activating oil. Um, another one of my favorite herbs is Shir Chang Pu, uh, sweet flag, Ichorus calamus, that's in this herbal extraction. Um, it grows all over Thailand and is just um, so vibrant there. A third one is Galangal. So 
you've got just three wonderful rhizomes there. Um, the two others are Asian spider flower and uh, Cassia siamia um, it's from a tree. So uh, there are multiple anti-inflammatory activities um, from those five herbs in combination with each other, as well as blood moving properties um, and very effective pain relief properties. So this is one that I love to use layering with um, zheng gu shui or evil bone water, if you prefer that, which is actually a really nice smell to combine with the activating oil. Um, they really layer nicely for that deep bone level pain. Um, and when you wanna do body work on the joints around like the tendons, um, this is wonderful to layer on top of the zheng gu shui uh, with gua sha um, or a strong tuina. So that is one of my most commonly used oils in the clinic. Um, basically applies to everyone <laughs> over the age of 25. So anyway, um, balancing oil is the next one. And uh, again, over 50% herbal infusion. Um, this one is bright, bright yellow because um, of the beautiful combination of lemongrass, kaffir lime uh, leaf, and peel, I believe. Um, spider lily, ply again, Thai ginger, uh, and white turmeric. So we have uh, whew, a lot for digestion in this one. The kaffir lime, the lemongrass, the ply, the turmeric. Um, and then spider lily is a bonus for anti-inflammatory and wound healing. Um, but man, this is an amazing spleen, stomach, just earth formula. It's so grounding. Um, and that feels so good to use on kids um, because they're so young and they just, you know, need this kind of grounding. And the, the other thing that um, I was really excited um, to formulate this with no menthol, uh, no eucalyptus, no camphor, no borneol, uh, no methyl salicylate. It just has clove oil. So you get this beautiful combination of the clove with that um, more uplifting, you know, like imagine the kaffir lime and the ginger together. It's this really lovely smell that focuses and grounds people. Um, and so if you have a tendon injury, especially a kid that has a tendon injury or a muscle injury, um, it's really perfect for that. Um, so using, this is a nice gateway <laughs> to massaging kids, um, you know, like to use gua sha or something where they're like, oh, I don't want you just pushing on me. You, know, you can just say, okay, well, I'm just going to rub in this oil and then, you know, you can manipulate their joints a little bit more. Um, so that's how I treat, you know, a multitude of like trampoline and bicycling injuries. <laughs> so uh, this is really re great for pediatrics. Um, and then it's something that my patients request over and over because they're just like, oh, I love that smell. Um, and they want to use it at home. And it's when you use it on the abdomen to do really gentle abdominal massage. Um, it's also phenomenal for um, helping to soothe nausea, helping to soothe indigestion, and especially anything related to nervous tension. It's just really, really great. Um, so if somebody has pain that's at the you know muscle and tendon level, I will often ask them to smell each one of these and tell me which one they prefer. And that's the one I go with um, because their um, action overlaps um, and a lot of it comes down to their body picking which one. So the last one, which I underutilize here because I'm in the Pacific Northwest is cold. Um, although I should use it more because it's, it's antifungal, it's anti-inflammatory, it um, in a certain way, it, it treats damp swelling. So um, it's classically used for any type of insect bite or skin irritation, including like plaque psoriasis, eczema, boils, 
severe, like, after it's closed up, you know, snake bites and dog bites and <laughs> insect bites. So um, I've had really great reports about people using this topically um, after, you know, having their worst mosquito bite reaction of their life and then putting this on it or even having an asthma attack and using the cold oil because it's so anti-inflammatory. Um, just sniffing it and putting a little bit on, on lung one and two can go a long way to help with that. So um, anyway, the, again, the herbal infusion is over 50%. Then it has borneal camphor, menthol, and eucalyptus. Um, this feels really cold. It feels cold. It, I'm pretty sure it's like a vasoconstrictor. Um, so the main herbs in it are hop-headed barleria, snake grass, pandan, uh, betel vine and leaf, and uh, gynura pseudochina. A lot of these are also being shown to treat cancer. Um, so they have this um, a tumor, ne tumor necrosis factor, an impact on that. So um, it's, it's something that is just really good for your skin. Um, and a lot of the ones, especially like the snake grass, can help with pressure ulcers um, and are strongly wound healing. So if there is this, um, you know, I wouldn't use it for like cellulitis because that's so severe, but um, like one step below that, if, if there's somebody that has a really rec a recalcitrant um, infection inflammation that's just not going away, the cold oil is really amazing for that. Um, so people can start imagining like, okay, is it, does it feel inflamed? Does it feel hot? Use a cold oil. It, does it, you know, feel like a really, um, you know, just deep in my muscle or deep in my joint? Use the activating oil. Um, if I feel like a bunch of stuff is wrong and I, you know, I want to get grounded and, you know, like my muscles are tense use a balancing oil. Um, and patients really respond well to that. So um, it's something that you can do to help them educate themselves uh, for you know picking something that has already been thought out in a logical system. That is not like they have to think about each ingredient. Like, oh, I need something with calendula in it for my skin. You know, trying to get people away from that and more into the systemic logic of the beautiful logic of Chinese medicine and, and other traditional medicines like Thai and Ayurvedic. So um, I know this is going a long time. I'll just say as far as the usage of it, um, as I mentioned before, you can layer it uh, with the um, zheng gu shui um, or a balm or all three, you can stack them. I love doing that. <laughs> Um, so you might just, you know, rub some of the zheng shui over a joint, put like a balancing oil or activating oil on top of that, um, and do gua sha or tuina. Um, and if you want a thicker balm, um, to maybe even be more soothing over the larger area, then you can do that, um, and do more smoothing activity, um, and then my other favorite usage is, you know, you can just let them sit under a um, infrared or, you know, heat lamp with this on and it'll activate it. But um, you can also, and this is their traditional use too, use it before a foot soak or after a foot soak um, to really activate the transdermal properties. Um, or you can use it with a steam durable compress. And I'm going to go into that a little bit more because the herbal compress is something that we're making in Thailand as well. Um, and I'll be coming out with a whole line of those in 2021 um, that we can actually white label for you if you'd like to create your own um, blends of herbal compresses and herbal pillows that are meant to be steamed. Um, so... But I'm also going to have a line out that's really along these same logical principles and ease of use kind of for patients. So my goal is to help acupuncturists 
expand um, the sense of what we do into the everyday life of our patients. And I hope that this little mini session um, that turned into a lecture can help with that in some way. And you can find my website at um, thtpdx.com or studiosapan.com. And that is studio, S-A-P-A-A-N, double A-N, dot com. So uh, thank you for listening. Take care. <laughs>